beach fishing, how to detect a bite and then hook the fish. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne and in this video, I'm gonna talk all about that. So you're down at the beach, how do you know when you're getting a bite? And then when you do get a bite, what do you do next? If you're enjoying these videos, make sure that you like and subscribe. Let's get into it. Okay, so I've pre-rigged a couple of lines. All I'm using for bait is worms, the good old worms. So I'm just gonna whack a couple of worm baits on. I'm gonna chuck one set line out and then I'm gonna hold a rod. And I'm gonna to talk to you and teach while I'm holding that rod. Uh, these were pre-rigged from another session and the leaders that I have on these lines are pretty light. It's only a 10 pound leader. So I am risking getting busted off if I hook a couple of decent fish. That actually happened in my last video. I had two salmon on at once, which was too much for the 10 pound leader. And they basically broke the line. So I do have some heavier leader in my bag but I'm just gonna use this because it was already rigged, ready to go. I caught a few nice worms today. There wasn't a lot of worms around to, to start off with, but the quality of the worms was good. And then they seemed to, as I was worming and the scent was getting around more and more, they just started coming a lot, up a lot more. So I've just put two worm baits on this rod. So I'm gonna whack him out. When I walked down to the beach here, there was already a couple of people fishing, so I a spot that I'd sussed out before, someone's already there, but that's all right. So I've walked down the beach a little bit and I'm just off the end of a sandbar, which still looks pretty good. So you can see that there's a, a few little waves breaking. The swell's not very big and the tide's going out at the moment, but I reckon I should catch some fish here. I'm just gonna toss this one out the back. So I've sort of landed that right on the end of that little sandbar. And I'm gonna whack this guy in. Just make sure the drag's okay. We'll see if anything takes that really quickly and I'm just gonna grab my other rod. Both of these rods are, are set up with a similar rig. Both of them have a two hook rig uh, and a long shank hook for the worms. So this is the same worm that I just used on the other rod. So I'm getting several baits out of the one worm. Just watching my other line. There's a little bit of drift out there. I can see there's a current moving from right to left. It doesn't look like there's heaps of current out there, but there obviously is some current. I can tell there's a current because my line has gone a little bit to the left. It's a bit of an angle on it and it looks like it's bouncing along the bottom. It looks like the sinker's moving a little bit. You can see, look, beautiful, beautiful worms for bait. I just rest him up on top of there. Now I've thrown my first line out a little bit of a distance. So I'm not gonna throw this one out a long way. I'll have one out a long way and one in close on the edge. The two rods that I'm using are the, are the same in as much, they're the same make and model of rod but one's 10 foot long and one's 12 foot long. You can see this is the actual rod I'm using. I really like these rods because they're pretty lightweight, but yeah, they're great fun to use. Alrighty, now, I'm happy to leave that out there because it has a couple of lovely worm baits on it. I'm gonna walk along just a little bit and fish near the edge over here. I just want to be far enough away from my other line that I don't risk getting tangled with it. And all I'm going to do with this one is just a little lob, just a little lob into the edge there. Let's talk about getting bites and how you can feel a bite. Because when you're down at the beach, it's not still water there's a lot of things going on you have waves breaking you have current and wash sometimes your sinker bounces across the bottom and it feels like little bump 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 
and you might mistake that for a bite. Other times a wave will break and crash and it'll make your line bang at the same time as the wave breaks. But that's not a bite. So how do we know when we're getting a bite? I like to make sure that I don't have any slack in my line so that I'm able to directly feel what's happening at the end. Also, you may notice I've got one of my fingers on the line. That just helps me get a little bit of extra feel for what's going on. Now, if a wave breaks on your line, that's quite obvious because often you'll see the wave break and then you'll get a corresponding bump on your line. So that's pretty easy to tell. You look out, you see a wave coming in. As it bumps down, you'll feel a bit of a bump on your line. Also, often when a wave breaks, it draws water before it breaks. So it sucks the water up and then crashes down. So very often you will feel your line getting pulled a little bit as that wave's drawing water to break. So your line will get pulled a little bit and then it'll crash onto your line. So that's obviously not a bite. When you do get a bite, it's a lot more direct than something like a wave or your sinker bouncing across the bottom. It's a lot sharper when you get a bite. Now, while I've been talking to you here, I've tossed my line out. So far, I haven't had a bite. It's not very far out. I'm just going to pull it a little bit closer to shore because it's just a little drop off here and often you get fish right on the edge of the drop off. So it's a matter of waiting for a bite. I'm just gonna um, check my other line and chuck it out again. So it looks to me like it's drifted to the side a little bit. So I wanna reposition it. And once I've done that, we're gonna talk about the next step. So the first thing is being able to detect the difference between a, a, a fish biting a wave breaking or your sinker bouncing across the bottom. That's the first thing. So next thing is to talk about, okay, what do I do when I get a bite? When do I actually strike to set the hook? Because that's really important. I've actually got a fish on here. I came to check this line because I saw it had gone sideways. It's a stingray, a little baby stingray. Okay, so this guy is, uh, this often happens when you use worms for bait because these little stingrays love worms. Now I'll let him go. So I'm just going to throw this, because um, I've got two baits on this, I'm just going to chuck it straight back out so that I can continue to teach you about how to hook a fish. So I'll chuck this guy out. I'll chuck it a little bit to the right, but probably that stingray is why it went sideways. I always like to check my drag and just feel the amount of tension that's on it. So it's not too, so the drag is not too tight, but not too loose. I know that's not very detailed, but I never use a, uh, like a scale to work that out, I just do it by feel. Okay, so we've got a bite. At what point do we want to set the hook? How do we know when to lean back into it and set the hook? So typically, I mean, one of the things to consider there is that with experience you'll find out that different fish bite in different ways. However, oftentimes a fish will hit a bait or whack it, you'll feel a bang bang on the line. Generally what I do is I wait until I get a steady pull on the line. Because when a fish is just whacking at the bait, it hasn't actually picked it up in its mouth and is swimming away with it. What you want to do is you want to be sure that your bait is in the fish's mouth when you lean into it to set the hook. The only real way that you can tell that is when the fish actually swims away with the bait, which means you feel a steady pull on the line. So generally I'll stand here and I'll wait. If I feel a couple of whack whacks, whack whack, I'm waiting for the fish to actually pick it up 
and start to swim away with it. Then I'm confident that it's got a hold of it. Then I'll strike and I'll, or I'll lean into it. Sometimes I strike fairly hard and that's because often there may be a bow in the line because of wind or current and there's a bit of slackness and you've got a little bit of stretch with the nylon so I like to make sure that it's actually moving at the other end. But simply speaking is you are waiting until you are confident that the fish has the bait in its mouth and is swimming away with it. So oftentimes that means waiting for a few moments until you feel that and not striking. The moment you feel a couple of bang bangs you don't just strike straight away. I just had a couple of nibbles and I'm just waiting. I can feel something going on. So I'm not striking yet. Hang on. Yep. See, I've got a fish now. I was waiting. I was getting... I could feel the bang, bang, bang on the line. But I didn't strike to set the hook straight away because I just didn't get that really solid pull from the fish, which I did in the end. And in this case, it's a small flathead. It's actually been jagged. I've actually caught him in the side of the head. It's got to be careful here because they've got such spikes, these things, and I don't want him to shake his head violently and spike me. There you go, I got the hook out. So this is actually a little sand flathead. They don't grow all that big, the sand flathead. Look, he's making his way back to the water. I'm mindful of not being spiked, so just going to help him down to the water's edge. Uh, there you go. So that was just a small fish, but I could feel him rat-a-tat-tatting, biting on the end. In the end, I actually didn't even hook him in the mouth. I caught him on the side of the face, but I'll chuck back out in the same spot again. See if I get anything else or some similar bites. I got a bite pretty quickly last cast, but ideally I'd like to hook something else. So let's talk a little bit about how different fish bite. Smaller fish like whiting and brim tend to whack, 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 whack at the bait a couple of times, but there will be a point where they pick it up and start to, to run with it. So that's definitely what it's like with them. So generally if I'm fishing for whiting, I'll wait for a minute until I can feel a bit more of a pull. Or sometimes, just by waiting, they will actually swallow the hook or take the hook in. Whereas a fish like a salmon, which is quite a bit bigger, they're quite aggressive. They'll hit a bait a couple of times, they'll just grab it and they'll run with it. So it's very obvious when a salmon grabs your line, very quickly it'll be pulling quite hard and that's very easy to lean into and hook. Often I catch trevally on the beach. They are a very soft biter. Trevally bite very softly and gently and it's not that easy to hook them. But it's once again, it's a matter of waiting until you think that there's a steady pull and then setting the hook. Taylor are a little bit different. When Taylor attack a bait, they are like a wild dog. They grab a bait and they just shake it and attack it and nail it they don't really pick it up and run with it. So generally when a tailor, when you know there's tailor in the area and they're hitting your bait, I normally will strike to set the hook in the middle of all of that banging and crashing that's going on. I don't really wait for tailor to pick it up and run with it. I've got a fish, but that's, that's, um. That was interesting. I've hooked a fish, but I actually hardly felt it bite. I thought I might have had some weed on my line. So I don't really know what this is. Could be another ray or something similar.
Okay. Is it another ray? Yes. Oh no, it's uh it's a banjo ray. It's a different type of ray. So this is what you call a banjo ray. They're quite got some quite nice markings on them, but this guy, I didn't actually feel a, a whack whack or a solid bite. I just felt some weight on my line and it felt a little bit like a chunk of weed. But then as I started to wind it, I could tell that it wasn't a piece of weed and it was moving. I think I need to go and tie another hook on. So I'll do that quickly and let this guy go. I don't know if they're edible. I don't think anyone does bother to try and eat these. I've chucked that out fairly wide just to see if there's anything out there. Even though the waves are really small, there's a really strong current sweeping along the beach. And the tide is going out, so that's probably helping that. Now, I have two lines, which I often do. I have a set line that I bait up and toss out and then I have one that I hold. Now, when you have a set line, obviously you're not there to set the hook yourself. So you are relying on the, the fish actually getting hooked without your help. But that does happen quite often. Although certainly when you have a set line, you do miss bites. You definitely catch more fish when you're holding onto a rod so that you are there when you get a bite and you know when to set the hook. So really with the set line, you're hoping that they um, get hooked in the side or swallow the hook, etc. But it's still worth having a set line out. You catch a lot of fish that way. I decided to move location from where we were fishing because the conditions were pretty rubbish. So we moved over onto the other side of the island, not far from where we were fishing before, and we're just going to start afresh. Looks a lot better here, but one thing I've learned over the years is you've got to know when to pull the plug. I've chucked two lines out. They're both rigged with a double hook with beach worms. Just got them there, just gonna wait until the fish start to bite. I'm getting a bite actually, right now, while I'm talking to you. Yep. Oops. Now I'm just gonna hold on to this. I'm not gonna strike just yet. I wanna wait till I can feel the fish. Yep, hang on. I missed it. <laughs> That was, no, actually, I didn't. <laughs> it was swimming in with me. Okay, so I'm walking down close to the water because it's always much easier to land a fish when you're close to it rather than being a long way away. Okay, so we have a lovely little salmon that has taken that worm bait. Perfectly hooked. Now you'll notice my top hook has got no bait on it. So had a couple of bites then. So I'm going to reload, toss my line out again, and then we'll just have a little bit of discussion about how to hook a fish. Just gonna flip this out beyond where the waves are breaking. The water's not too cold. I don't have to cast out very far. Now I'm just gonna hold this and wait for a bite. So that's always the exciting thing when you throw your line in the water and you're anticipating a bite. But as I was explaining earlier, when you set the hook, you want to make sure that you're confident that the fish actually has your hook with the bait in its mouth. When a fish is just knocking at the bait, you don't know that. 
You only really know that once you feel the fish start to swim away and pull hard. Then you know, because there's a constant pull on the line, obviously fish, that fish has the bait in its mouth and is swimming away. So that is when you lean into it to set the hook. The good thing about this spot is that I've chosen a place that's relatively calm. There's not massive waves crashing on my line, although believe it or not, even in a place like this with small waves, there's lots of movement. And even the little waves pull your line and they crash on your line and there's all sorts of things going on which are not bites. And often I've found that people when they are learning to beach fish will think they've had a bite when, you know, whether they're, when their sinker's bouncing across the bottom or a wave breaks on their line. So they end up pulling their line in thinking that they've lost their bait, but it wasn't a bite in the first place. And you want to make sure that you've got your bait out in the water as much as possible so that you have every chance of hooking a fish. So if you're wanting your line in and it's not out there, you don't really want to do that. I cast my line out just a little bit further then because often a good tactic is to put in a, a medium car, medium to three quarter cast, let your bait sit out the back for a few minutes and wait for a bite. If you don't get a bite, pull it in a meter or so and then wait. See if you get a bite there. Because sometimes you will locate where the fish are. They might be a certain distance out from the shore, but we can't tell that, so we just have to test. So I've thrown a bit further out, I'm gonna let it sit there. And then, if I don't get a bite in a couple of minutes, I'll then pull it in a little bit and then repeat that process. Even though the swell is not big, every time I see a wave break in, I feel it dragging and pulling my line. As the wave catches a hold of my line, it actually pulls it. Sometimes when the wave breaks on the line, it's almost like a chopping action and you feel like a, a whack. And if you're actually not watching the surf, you could think that that's a bite, but it's just the bait, just the wave crashing onto your line. But certainly, when you're standing here, just fishing and looking at the ocean, you can tell when a wave crashes onto your line because you see it happen and then you feel the effects of that on your line. I want to get in here and grab him. He's got big, big. Look at that guy. <laughs> he was stealing my beach worms. He's got quite decent nippers on him, this one. I'm actually going to keep him for bait because crab's a good bait. So thank you, Mr. Crab. If you're not holding your rod and you're just standing and you've got them set like I have in a rod holder, you, what, you can watch the tip of the rod, but you can also notice when little waves are breaking on the shore, you'll see a corresponding movement of your rod, but it's just the wave. And you can actually see when you get a bite, it's independent of a wave, and bites are usually much more direct than just, see my rod tip's moving a little bit now, but it's just waves. Like this one just here, it's just moving a little bit. But that's not any fish biting it, it's just the waves washing there. Usually if something decent takes it, it'll bend right over and then that's really obvious. It's nice to just be able to chill out and have a couple of lines out there, just keep your eye on them. Oh, I think that might have been a bigger wave. Oh, hang on, no, that's a fish. Yeah, that was a fish. Big difference between a wave and that. So, um, the bites have been a little bit slow, but 
still getting a few. I'm heading, heading north. Pretty close to shore so I can get this guy in. Okay. Well, he liked that lovely big worm bait. Thankfully, sa salmon are one of those fish that are easier to hook because they're not timid biters. They, they are really quite ferocious biters. They are very hungry, especially when they see something that they like, like a pilchard or a worm. So. Pretty easy to catch. And this guy has swallowed the hook. You can see it's right down his throat. So this is my second salmon of this session, but I'm keeping them because we don't have any fish in the fridge and we like the salmon. Oh, 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 look at that. Oh, that's a definite bite, that one. Yep. <laughs> Didn't have to hook that guy, he hooked himself. Well, that's a good example of fish basically hooking themselves when you've um, got your line set in a rod holder. Beach worms certainly work very well in that regard because they're a, they're a kind of a small profiled soft bait. They're very easy for fish to sort of suck them in as opposed to a much larger bait. Well, I've got a nice little feed here. I'm going to head home before dark. I trust that this video has been helpful and that you've learnt a few things about how to detect a bite and how to hook a fish when you're beach fishing. Make sure that you put any questions that you have in the comments because I read all of the comments and I really value that feedback and I look forward to seeing you very soon.